promise. I'll pay you. <laughs> now, how do you know what time we'd get here? I'm a detective. Oh, of course. Hello, Jeff. Hello. God, you look well, fantastic. Thank you. I see you brought Sue Ellen. <laughs> For me? Yeah. Come on, let's get this stuff in the boot. Yeah, I'll help you with the story. We did his stage, you know. They offered us Sheriff of Las Vegas. Yes, I had to turn it down. You have to toss a coin for your wages. I see you decided to help the American economy. I should have brought a truck. I hope it's been raining while we've been away. Oh, charming. All the same, there's no place like home, Maggie. I wish I said that. All I want is a decent cup of tea. She kept saying that all the way around America. God, blimey! What have you got in here? Ronald Reagan. Dad? Dad, we're home. I don't hold out. Much hope of feeling anyone's collar. Yes, I do know, Sergeant. Sorry, oh, ma'am, I forgot for you. Oh, dear. Sorry, I wasn't. Oh, no. What happened? Oh, dear. We've been done, I'm afraid. Eh? Bloody hell. What a welcome home. I hadn't been gone more oh, than half an hour. Oh, Dad, it's not well, your fault. Up, sorry, they but... forced the bathroom window open. But, but, I've looked after this place, honest, Maggie. Dad, lover. it's not your fault. Come on, there are thieves everywhere. We can't live our life waiting for them. Didn't the neighbours see nothing? Not many people at home this time of the day, sir. Well, I could certainly do with that cup of tea now. How about you two? Uh, no, thank you, ma'am. Uh, thanks all the same. I must get back. Not as pushed out here as you are in town, but it's still pretty hectic for us. Thanks all the same. Right, thank you. Good day, sir. Good, Good day, day Sergeant. Good thanks day. a lot. Well... Let's get stuck in. No, wait. Cup of tea first. Oh, yeah, dead right. Come on, Dad. I'm the one who's been on holiday. You go and sit down. Go on. You stay for a spot of supper later, Jake? Uh, no, thanks, Meg. I'm on late turn. Rain check? Right. Aye, well, I wouldn't be averse to you putting the fear of God into him. Yeah, right. You tell him. As soon as he sets foot, I want him here in my office on the double. Right. Cheers. What's up? Someone due for a rocket? Ah, it's young Taylor skiving again. Quick verbal knee capping should soon sort him out. Yeah, well, I was going to offer to buy you a quick one. All oh, right, fine, Taylor, can wait. But I see you've got rather a lot to do. Nah, there's nothing that can't wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow? You're forgetting something. What? Oi, Maggie. Oi, Maggie. 
And this place, it looks like a... Uh, midden. Oh, right, midden. well, thanks for the offer, but I'd better get stuck in. Otherwise, her ladyship will do her fruit. <laughs> well, it just sort of all piles up. You know how it is. No, not really. I'm a particularly neat and tidy person myself. Oh, I... Not a blot in my papers. Anyway, I'll have one for you. I'll see you tomorrow yeah. night. Right. Oh, Gov. Um, I mean, you know, we spoke about me getting my own office. Oh, come on, Bob. We've been over all this before. You know as well as I do, we've outgrown this place. Unless we get the promised extension, well, you're just going to have to soldier on. OK, well, at least can we get another desk in? I mean, it's like a madhouse out there. I can't hear myself think when they're all in. So where's it going to go? Over there. Hmm. All right, I'll see what I can do. Maybe it's not such a bad idea. That way you can continue to slog it out in here and not inflict your blood feud on the rest of the station. No, yeah? no, 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 no. That's all in the past. Oh, yeah. Oh, hi. There we go, famously. Mm. Oh, Gov, I'm glad I caught you. It's Maggie. There's been a bit of Bob. I saw that. Well, our friend doesn't hurry back from the off licence with that uh, plonk scene. You'll be able to paste a new wallpaper with it. Come on, let's put it out now. It won't be much longer. Do you remember that little Italian place in San Francisco where you tried out your Italian? And they didn't understand the word because they were all Poles. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what about Las Vegas? All the stars in that floor show and all for nothing. Tom Jones fancied you. Where are all those sweat scarves he threw at you? Mind about that. What about that blonde in the cowgirl skirt that kept following you around? She mistook my accent for Boston. She thought it was one of the Kennedy kids. <laughs> Didn't you tell her? Not straight away. Rotten devil. You know, your dad, dad would have... Well, he would, wouldn't he? Yeah. He'd have loved it. First time, isn't it? Yeah, we've never had a holiday without him before. I missed him. So did I love. Mum, we don't talk about it, but I know. I know you do, love. Yeah. What would he said about police pay in the States? Oh, let's let's emigrate. emigrate. <laughs> oh, Dad. Love, finish that, can you? And I'll go, OK? Oh, hello, sir. Well, that was some welcome home, wasn't it? Jake just told me, now, listen, uh, is there anything I can do to help anything the lads can do? Oh, no, it's all right, sir. The local strength are being very helpful. Um, I should be a bit late in, in the morning, though. No, don't bother. Take the day off. You're probably suffering from jet lag anyway. Get yourself together. I'll see you the day after. My tan will have faded by then. Well, uh, Sergeant Fenton can help you there. I understand his uh, tan comes out of a tube. <laughs> Well, if you're sure that's all right. Well, yeah, oddly enough, we've managed to get by without you for three weeks. I think we can hold out for another day. Yeah. Have a dick at that. Oh, terrific. Good morning. They told me Angie oh, Dickinson right. left town. No. She asked about you all before she went. Oops. Oh, are you that colour all over? I'll eat your heart out. So which of you jokers has got more money than sense? Well, didn't you know you had a secret admirer? <laughs> well, we would have sent them, if we thought, Chief. Thanks very much, but that's just right, OK? Right, cheers. Cheers. Did you know that there was a bar in Washington that they won't serve you unless you're sitting down? I mean, they don't serve customers if they're standing up. That could be handy near closing time. Exactly. Well, I remember what D. Martin said. You're not drunk. If you can lie on the floor, 
Without holding on? That's pretty good. Thank you very much. There'll be something in that. Yeah, something in, in what? Cane. In that, if you're asking. Bob, I'm supposed to be the Scotsman. You know, I swear he waits for me. Same again, and a half yeah. for me. No? Cover me, but now I'm fine. There's a parcel for you. Arrived just after you'd left. Oh, I wasn't expecting anything. Which is the essence of surprise. Yeah, well, isn't it? Dead right, Squire. Certainly is. Oh, it's probably just another packet of bump from the Home Office. A neat little 80 page memo on a suspect's rights. Well, they'd hardly send it through the post. Oh, that's true. Anyway, it'll have to wait. I've got to go and see a man about that new wallpaper. I'll probably be a bit late back. If the Governor wants to know where I am, I'm out taking statements, OK? Right. Cheers. Bye. <laughs> They must have cost you a packet, those daisies, son. Why don't you just tell her? The only thing you're going to pull this way is a muscle in your wallet. Well, I didn't send Maggie those flowers. Oh, come on. You won't pull your pin out. But my oath. I'll tell you the truth. I thought it was you. Not my scene, is it? Half a crater light owl, yeah. Now, oh, come to think of it, it's more your senior executive style, isn't it? You know, senior officer. You don't look at me. Can you imagine what Mackie would do with a basket of flowers I sent to her? Well, I wouldn't like to try. She's an inventive girl. <laughs> so, if it wasn't any of us, who? Russell. Ah. Maybe it's some wooden top in the CID office cherishing a pure and secret passion for her. Yeah. And you told me you had my mysterious present here. <clears throat> what are you doing? A simple precaution. There's a note. Now. Hope you and Steve will enjoy these, a friend. No card of the flowers, but it could be the same joke. Is it delivered by hand? Parcel post, central London postmark. It's no help at all. What about the flowers? They must have been delivered personally. Harrods, small boy, nondescript, obviously running an errand. It's a joke. Maybe. Maybe not. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sir. No, it's okay. It's okay. Come on. <clears throat> We're uh, all getting a bit heavy about my mysterious present. Well, some funny things get left at police stations these days. Mm -hmm. Do you not think that the bomb squad it's really... It's all right. I've done the basic course. If it starts looking complicated, I won't push it, don't worry. Because the lady likes. No, I don't think so. I mean, it could be just coffee cream inside, but on the other hand. Do you think you're being a bit overcautious? No harm in forensics having a look. I'll make sure you count them first. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, here's Mum. Oh. Steve. Love his granddad. 
Dad? It, oh, it, it's a lot of fuss about nothing. I found him like this when I came home from football practice. I've sent for the doctor. What are the symptoms? Yeah, well, I'm a bit groggy. I'll be right as rain in a minute. Oh. oh damn it. I must not like you to splash out an expensive gatto, Dad. Hey? I never. Didn't you order it? No. <laughs> a little toy van from one of them posh French pastry shops. Delivered it this afternoon. I, th I thought it was a surprise for me. Oh, my God. Have you both had some? Well, I've had a bit. Well, I feel fine, Mum. What's up? Something Russell said about chocolates. Oh, my God, I've got a phone. Oh, 0283. Uh, Mrs. Forbes, uh, I just wanted to check the gatto arrived safely. Yes. Who is this? Yes, but why? Never mind why, my dear. Just checking. Good night. Can you take a deep breath? <clears throat> that hurt? Oh, when you press it that hard, it does. Right. Yeah. How was it delivered? By hand, one of those special little delivery vans. Did he managed to get a name? No. Was there a card? No. Nope. Pity. Mm. Any other symptoms, Mr. Taylor? No. Headache, no. loss of feeling anywhere, pins and needles? Oh. Well, Grandpa. Oh, don't call me Grandpa. Oh, all right. Sorry. Well, I'm happy to be able to tell you that basically you're in your usual state of rude health. Thank you very much. Might I ask how many pieces of uh, that delicious gatto you had? Three. Large or small? <laughs> Medium. Oh, come on, Grandpa. You scoffed nearly half of it. Well, you had a bit. That's dead right, a bit. Yeah. Well, it was very Moorish. And at your age? <laughs> there you go again. Still on about my age. Very well. To a gentleman of your maturity. Yeah. Moorish is sickish is liverish. Diagnosis, too much chocolate gatto. Oh, well, thanks a lot. So you don't think there's anything wrong with the cake itself, Doctor? No, it doesn't look like it. Steve's as right as ninepence. Simple case of greed. Look, give him one of these every four hours and keep him off the chocolate gatto. Goodbye, Mrs. Forbes, Mr. Russell, Steve, sir. Thank you very much, Doctor. Okay. Good night. <clears throat> Good night. Good night. I'll uh, still have the rest of it analysed, even if it's OK, well, we've still got this question. Why is someone sending you presents anonymously? Fit me up? Fit you up? What, a box of chocolates, a sachet tory? I'd say they're trying to fatten you up. What for? The kill? Well, I wonder when the one that's going to explode is coming. Well, maybe the next one will be a mint coat. That'll calm you down. Come on, Steve. No joke. No, I'm afraid it's not. Now, listen, as from now, neither of you accept any deliveries you're not expecting while your mother's out of the house, right? Now, tomorrow, I'll get on to tracing the van. I'm not too hopeful. All the raids just now, Night, Steve. George, see you tomorrow morning. Steve, night. get a glass of water. Thanks very much. Well, you anyway, there's a recession on. Yeah, bye. Uh, Mum, that was Arthur Hughes. He says he's got something to tell us about that load of Russian watches. Oh, oh well, if it's kosher, look after him. How right. are you getting on with Foley in the GBH? Can't find any witnesses. You know Foley. Oh, well, keep trying. We'll have a conference about the rest later on. Oh, where's Jimmy? Uh, he's shaking down Jacko Robertson about the phony one-armed bandits. Bye. Mmm-hmm. Mmm. Oh, delicious. Mm. Strawberry. And just a hint of quantra. I take it forensics have given them a clean bill of health. I hope not. Well, they have indeed. Mm. And how right they were. Here. I suppose you'd better have them. After all, they are yours. Well, thanks a lot. Um... No. No, I, uh... 
Don't think so. I think I've had just a little bit too much breakfast. All yours. Enjoy. I know. I suppose no one's delivered a mink coat by any chance. No. Just wonderful. Yeah, crop. Mm. Newspaper. Eric Hill, classical guitar concert. To be perfectly honest, I thought it was just going to be a three day wonder. But this is different. I mean, you fall for it, put you in a certain place, certain time, his choice. Now, Maggie, I want you to think back, refer to your diaries if you have to. Now, see if anyone springs to mind who you've put away in the past, been released recently, who could bear you a particular no, grudge. I've already done it, sir. So far, I've drawn a blank. Sid Jago, a bit of petty, released six weeks ago. He's gone back to live in Halifax. Mm. Mary Parker, now, she was a nasty bit of work. She came out last week. But not vendetta merchants. Oh, any luck on the van that delivered the cake? Yeah. Bright lad on the night shift traced it to a little patisserie in Kensington. They got a letter, plain paper, no address, cash money enclosed, simple message, deliver the cake to your place. I think I'll go to that concert tonight, see if we can sort this joker. Well, you'll give him the advantage. Now, you won't know who he is or where he is. On the other hand, he'll know who you are and exactly where you are. Oh, come on, he even knows about Steve. Well, he could have got that from the newspapers. Anyway, I think I'd like a word with him. I mean, there's no law about sending anyone anonymous presents. So far, he hasn't even committed a crime. Doesn't mean to say he's not a criminal. Or what's worse, a psychopath. If he intends you harm, public place like concert hall, ideal spot, isn't it? Easiest place in the world to get lost in after a knife, acid job. Oh, come on. You'd been done before and you know it. Then what? Go to concert, but with backup. Jimbo can use Steve's ticket while Jake goes walkabout back of the hall. Meantime, I'll get a couple of lads uh, keeping an eye on your house. Tickets through the post. Oldest dodging the book. It's someone waiting in the house. Well, that's not necessary. Steve will be there, and I'll get Dad to pop in and keep him company. Russell. Yes, he is. Who wants her? For you. No name. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. If it's Eskimo, I'll get it transferred. Hello, Maggie Forbes. Did you get the ticket safely? Yes. It's him. Sorry, it's such short notice. It starts at 7.30. I'll see you both there. Goodbye. Wait. Hello? Oh, damn it. Well, he will be there tonight. So will we. I did say it was an undercover job.
Excuse me, please, sir. Uh, we're police officers. What, what you Would you like to come with us, sir? Come on. Excuse us. All right, now you know who I am and where my birthmarks are. What the hell is going on? If it's become a crime while I've been out of the country to try and pick up a beautiful woman, I think I'll emigrate for good. I really am very sorry, sir. It's just that, well, someone has been sniping at me and... Well, anyway, thanks for the compliment. Perhaps at other time, when you're... Gorillas are being fed or something? I do apologize, sir. It wasn't my doing. Perhaps I can offer you some complimentary tickets to our next attraction. What is it? The police ball? Excuse me. Oh, yes, Mrs. Billings. May I have a word with the police? Oh, yes, of course. Come in. I think I may have found what you're looking for, Inspector. Well, please, go on. Well, um... These are all the actual ticket stubs here, and these ones here, these big white ones, these are the dockets from the ticket agencies. The system we work here is that patrons are asked to exchange the dockets at the box office for our own tickets, to avoid any unpleasantness in the auditorium if someone has been double booked. I see. How, how can that help us? Well, well, your seats were booked through an agency. Here's the docket. The purchaser must have come here this morning and exchanged the docket for the actual tickets. Some people do, you know, to avoid the crowd before the performance. Anyway, this docket was in the box office when I took over from Miss Tremlow. She does mornings, and when I, I arrived... I still don't see you. Well, look at the docket. There are three seats on it. Your two, and a single one, three rows behind yours. Got the bugger. Sorry, madam. Could he have bought three together? I mean, if he'd wanted. Oh, certainly. These seats were booked yesterday. And uh, what was the number of the third seat? K-22. Thank you. Uh, three minutes. Oh, let's give it five minutes. We don't want to cause a stampede. Let me have a look at that plan. Wait until afterwards. No. Sorry. Steve's still up. Fancy a cover? Yeah, as long as you've got plenty of ice and soda. Mm, you never change. The only woman I know who keeps a fuse wire on top of the fuse box. Here, poke it in the air, Jimmy. Sorry. Oh! 
Cheeky. I'm glad you approved some of my household arrangements, Jake. All the same, Maggie. I warned you about your shaky old wiring before. There we go. Well, Steve, what happened? Oh, I didn't have a plug for the new music centre, so I stuck the wires in and bang. You're oh. a twit. If you've only got a new ring main put in, get fuse plugs that... Well, Ray was going to do that after he'd finished rewiring the kitchen. Just a minute. What new music centre? Well, this one. I thought we told you to have nothing to do with anything that we weren't expecting. Steve, you're not a child. It's in the greenhouse when I came home. Oh. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mum. I, well, I just thought you might have forgotten to tell me about it. I mean, well, we've been meaning to get a new one. It just looks so great, I just have to try it. God, blimey. That's when you didn't block Battersea Power Station. Yeah, well, I did get a bit of a shock. Well, are you all right now? Yes, thanks. Fine. You're asking for trouble sticking bare wires in a socket. You should have known better. Well, let that be a lesson to you. Well, there doesn't seem to be anything dodgy about the music centre. I mean, it's not a booby trap or anything. Oh as if he's building up to something. Santa Claus, the bomb in his sack. Look at the ticket agency he used. You got the registration number of his sleigh. This is all a complete waste of time. Whilst you're plodding on here, he's getting further and further away. Oh, Mrs. Bulstrode, I do assure you that the description of the youth that snatched your handbag has already been widely circulated. I've no doubt. I've also no doubt that it could fit half the louts in the city and that no one's taking the slightest notice of it. Oh, I assure you, we don't send out descriptions just to have them ignored. If it were one of your own, you'd be jumping to Madam, it, I dare say. There'd be sirens all over the Madam, city. if we could just get on with your statement. If the police kept their eyes open, there wouldn't be so much bag snatching going on. Too busy, harassing motorists. Uh, yes, now, you say that uh, you were at Cambridge Circus and that you were waiting for a taxi. Taxis? Well, you know what they're like. Never there when you want one. It's my belief Are that they're all waiting the team... for this taxi. Well, I've said so three times. Cool. I wouldn't mind swinging in suspenders. Theatre club, son. Got to be a member. We always raid it. True. And you're sure there's nothing. I mean, I'm taking my old aunt, and she is easily shocked, and very rich. Your legacy is safe with me, sir. I've seen it myself, and there's absolutely nothing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Morning. So much. Absolutely nothing in it. I was only kept awake by the snores of the man next to me. And what can I do for you, gentlemen? Something a little uh, sportive. Sorry, we don't do discounts for organizations. Listen, precious, save it for the punters. We're after information, not comedy. And how can I help? Commissioner. Sergeant will do, for both of us. Is this one of yours, is it? Forgive the cautiousness. There's an awful lot of forgeries around, terrible scenes in the aisles of theatres. You might care to look into it. Yes, it's one of ours. You remember anything about it? Well, I do, too. I recollect him wanting three seats, two together, and one separate a few rows behind. As a matter of fact, I asked him about it in a roundabout of a sort of a way. Yeah, I thought you might. And um, what did he say? He said he wanted to give someone a surprise. Did that strike you as odd? If you knew some of the things people ask for in here, you wouldn't think a man with two left feet was odd. Can you describe it? I can do better than that. I can show you where he works. The dry cleaners across the road there. You can see him for yourself in a minute. He'll be coming out for his coffee at the Copper Kettle. 11 o'clock every morning, sure as fate. You can set your digital quartz by him. Thank you. Let's go and lift him. Well, what's the charge? You know Russell's view on it. It's broken no law. Yet. Yeah, on the other hand, if he is up to something, we'd only frighten him off. Well, it could be a trolley case, ready to run wild any minute. Yeah, what with? A bottle of cleaning fluid and a fistful of coat hangers. Look, I've got to get back to Seven Dials. Russell's yelling for a port in Hallam Street robbery. Now, you stay on here. Keep up on Charlie Boy. I'll need the car. Yeah, well, so will I.
Hedge. Oh, uh, Jimmy. Now be careful. Madam. <sighs> D.I. Forbes. This is your friend. Who is this? Who's speaking? I told you. It's your friend. Gee, it's him. Try and get a trace quick. You looked so lovely last night. But I was very disappointed you didn't enjoy the concert. Well, you didn't stay for the second half. I had to go, you know, somewhere during the interval. I got back late and you'd gone. And you didn't bring Steve with you. Oh, um, I did enjoy it, but I had to get back. Um, Steve wasn't well, you see, that's why I had to bring another friend. It was very kind of you to send the tickets. Tell me, who are you? What have you got all your bloody electronic equipment for? Doing the pools? Look, tell her to keep him talking. Tell me, did Stephen enjoy his new music centre? Or did you enjoy it, come to that? Keep him talking. Right. Oh, very much. Uh, but it must have cost you a great deal of money. Now, you shouldn't have. Don't you give that another thought, my dear. I've got lots of surprises for you yet. So many surprises. You just wait and see. It'll be just like Christmas. <laughs> oh, I've got to go now. But don't you worry. I'll keep in touch. Oh, no, but just a minute. There are so many things that I want to know, but... I told you. Don't worry. I know where to find you. Wait. Hello? Was that one of those obscene telephone calls? Any minute now. There he goes. That's funny. What? The copper kettle's the other way. But when do I get my handbag back? Well, we will make every effort, madam, I do assure you. Well, that's not very really good. As soon as we hear anything, we'll be in touch. Jean. That's all very well, but it's very well, inconvenient. Meanwhile, in case in your insurance company will ring us, then we'll confirm the details. People like you would do well to remember 
But it's we taxpayers who pay your wages. Adding Santa Claus on the end of that line, but not for long enough. Tell me, how is it they can always do it in the pictures? Well, it doesn't matter. We found him. Know where he works. Jake, tell me. Well, Jimmy's watching him now. Garden Spade. Well, what's his game? Well, maybe he moonlights as a grave digger. Mm. Mm, I don't like the sound of it. I reckon we ought to pull him. How can we? All he's done so far is behave like Santa Claus. Yeah, well, I see the man is behaving in a suspicious manner, and he ought to be lent on before he actually does something. Whereupon he promptly starts screaming blue murder about wrongful arrest, and the press have a field day. No. All we can prove for certain is that he sent Maggie a couple of concert tickets. Now, the rest of the stuff, the... Uh, the flowers, the chocolates, the music centre, it's all dodgy ground. We'll prove it eventually, handwriting, the rest of it, yes. But at the end of the day, what have we got? Possible charge of harassment, conduct likely to lead to a breach. Not unless Maggie's prepared to go Bible, that she'd have taken an axe to him if she'd found him. Now, this one's clever. He's practically begging us to get egg on our faces. Yeah, we can't just do nothing. I agree. Right. As from now, I want to watch on him round the clock. I want to know who he is, what he is, what he's all about. I want to know what makes him tick. I want to know if he's got any previous, and I mean anything, anyway. If this man as much as burps, I want to know about it. Yes, but that is going to take a lot of man yes, isn't it, it? Heads. How come he always turns up heads? It's the law of averages. Off you go. His name's Selby. He's 52. His wife died three years ago and he's got no previous. And he lives no more than a quarter of a mile away from Maggie. He goes straight home every night, doesn't seem to drink, and he's got no women friends. Anything else? Late last night, he drove very slowly past your house. Then he went home, brought out the spade, real quiet-like, and locked it in the boot of his car. Right, tonight, I want a pair of you. Observation. Maggie's house. One inside, one out. Maggie, yeah. Send Steve off to his granddad's for the night. Don't care what you tell him. Just get him out of the house. Don't want any clutter, yes? You still awake? Oh, barely. What time is it? Just gone half twelve. It looks like Santa's cried off. Could be. Ask him a few more minutes, eh? All right, not many. I'm starving. I'll get us some soup. Oh, I bet Jake could do with some. He must be frozen out there. Jake? What's up? Would you go a bowl of onion soup? Oh, don't go for me. Right, get another ten minutes, then call it a day, OK? Right. This is stupid. Waiting around for some nutter with a shovel to pull some sort of stunt. It's like waiting for the other shoe to drop. What? Never mind. Let it go with that insurance blow. Oh. No problems. They'll pay for the telly and the other gear and the redecorating. That's a relief. 
I was going to have to strip a few walls. You don't like decorating? Well, I prefer it to toothache, but only just. Is that gambit used up? Got any more? No. I'm working on it. No, wait. Could be your friend. Yes, well, it's me he wants to talk to. I'm just about ready for him. Oh! Damn! Well, then he's got more scent than you have. God bless, Dad. Bye. Right, soup. Do you read? Over. Jake? He's here. Right, keep me posted. Jimmy, hallway. What's he doing? He's opening the hood of his car. And? He's got the spade. And something else. You can't see it clearly. It looks heavy. Listen. All right. No, no. Stop it. Leave me alone. Shit, no, sure no, no. Let me go. Take any help. Let me, me alone. It's in the bundle. Well, you're not going to believe this. It's, uh, it's a rose bush. Joseph's coat. Beautiful pink and yellow. Better sit down. Jimmy, why don't you get him a drink? All right, now what's all this about, Mr. Selby? How do you know my name? Never mind about that. What's going on? I wanted you to have a rose. Yes, I can see that. What about all the rest of it? The flowers, the chocolates, the music center. What about all that? I read in the local paper about the robbery and all. And how you'd lost your husband. And how brave you'd been. And I knew he wasn't there anymore to help you. And give you the pretty things he would have done. The kind of things I used to give my wife. And I just wanted to show there are people who care. I mean, it, it makes me sick how they knock the police. Spreading stories as if the police were our enemy. I can't stand that. I think you do a terrific job. <coughs> well, thank you very much, Mr. Selby. Just that when I started getting all those mysterious presents, uh, not everybody is like you. Uh, I got the wind up. Oh, I'm so me? sorry. I wouldn't have frightened Why you for the secrecy? world. Secrecy. I think that's what frightened me most of all. Well, I was pretty sure you wouldn't accept presents if I came straight out with them. Isn't there something in police regulations? Also, I read something by Alexander Pope. I read a lot since my wife. Well, I read this bit by Pope, and it struck me. Do good by stealth, and blush to find it fame. That struck me. We really ought to get this rose in, you know. You need one just there. If one of your young men would give me a hand. Mr. Selby. 
You really mustn't send me any more expensive presents, and I cannot accept the music centre. Oh, I see. I'm so but sorry. I, I didn't realise that. Stretch a point with the rose tree. And I did love the flowers. They were beautiful. Flowers? I didn't send any flowers. Well, then, who? Oh, not me. Shall we? Heads. There's tails. Come on, sunshine, I'll do the spade work. Are you sure no one from the Nick sent me those flowers? I'm positive. Do good by stealth and blush to find it fame. It's the job, isn't it, Jake? I mean, do villainy by stealth, that we understand. Do good by stealth, just didn't occur to us. You know what I mean? <laughs>